Hi guys, Pete the Wargamer here, bringing you another Warhammer 40k painting tutorial. This time, we'll be tackling one of the Voidsman miniatures from the Kill Team Road Trader box set. And as always, we'll be using the Citadel range of paints to do so. Before we can begin painting, we first of all need to prime. I like to use a grey primer for this task, as it works as a good base coat to build upon for both lighter and darker colours. You can use any miniature suitable grey primer that you have to hand for this. After priming, the first step is to paint the trousers, and for this, we'll be starting off with a base coat of Eshin Grey. However, before applying the paint, we first of all want to water it down slightly. Thinning out the paint will not only make it easy to work with, but if we apply a couple of coats, we'll be left with a much smoother finish. So take your paint and mix it with an equal amount of water. When painting miniatures, I like to work from the inside out by painting the more recessed areas first before tackling the parts on the outer limits of the miniature. By painting this way, we can avoid accidentally overspilling onto areas that have already been covered when trying to get to those hard to reach areas. So with your thinned Eshin Grey, you can apply a couple of layers of paint to the trousers to ensure a good smooth coverage. Using the same thinning technique from the last step, we'll next be painting the Voidsman's tunic using Thunderhawk Blue. As this isn't a base paint, I would recommend at least two thin coats of the paint to ensure a solid base coat to build up from. For the cuffs of the tunic, we'll be using a base coat of Fenrisian Grey. To paint the leather straps and the visor on the helmet, we'll be using Rhinox Hide. Next, we'll be painting the boots using Abaddon Black. For the hands and face, you'll want to use a base coat of Cadian Flesh Tone. To achieve a white colour on the helmet, I'll be using Celestra Grey, which is a very light grey. Using this paint now will allow us to use a pure white highlight later on. The next few steps will see us base coat the metallic parts of the miniature. These areas include the armour, the trim on the helmet and detailing on the weapon. For all of these areas, we'll be using Balthazar Gold. To paint the gold trim at the bottom of the tunic, we'll be using Retributor Armour. The final group of metallic areas to paint are the silver areas, and these will be painted using Lead Belcher. Before we progress onto the washers, we next want to paint the glowing blue areas on the tank, and for this, we'll be using Thousand Suns Blue. However, before you begin this step, thoroughly clean out your paint water and brushes to prevent any cross-contamination of metal flakes into your other paints and washers. With all of our base coats completed, we can start to apply some washes. These are great for adding shading into the recesses and for increasing depth in the miniature. The first wash for this is Non Oil, and this will be applied over the silver, brown, grey, white and blue parts of the miniature. However, for these last two areas, I would recommend mixing in a little Lamia Medium to reduce the strength of the wash. This is entirely optional, but it will prevent the wash from darkening down these areas too much. The next wash to use is Agrax Earthshade, and this will be applied over the bronze areas. The final wash to apply is one of Reichland Flesh Shade, and this will be applied to the gold trim as well as the face and hands. With our washes completed, we can now turn our attention to the highlights. These thin lines of paint applied along the raised edges of the miniature will really help to enhance its level of detail. We'll be starting off using Eshin Grey once again, but this time we'll be using it to highlight the edges of the boots and also the weapon. To do this, take a brush with a fine point and dip it into some slightly watered down paint. Then gently drag the brush along the raised edges, creating a thin line of lighter coloured paint. The next highlight will be of Dawnstone and this will be applied to the Voidsman's grey trousers. To highlight the edges of the tunic, we'll once again be using Fenrisian grey. For the lighter coloured cuffs of the tunic, we'll be adding a highlight of Ulthran Grey. In this next step, we'll be highlighting the edges of the brown leather areas using Gorthor Brown. The next area to tackle is the visor, and we'll be approaching this in a slightly different way in order to give the visor the effect that it is a deep red reflective surface. We'll be starting off by using Corn Red to paint a line down the centre of the visor and along its bottom edge. The vertical line should be around a 1mm in thickness. Once the Corn Red lines have dried, we can then use some lighter Evil Sun Scarlet to paint a thinner, brighter red line down the centre of the visor and along a small section of the bottom edge. Make sure that the darker Corn Red is still visible either side of the thin red line to create the effect of a reflective red surface. 
To highlight the small amount of facial features visible and also the knuckles, we'll be using Kislev Flesh. To highlight the helmet, I'll be using some white scar to paint some lines parallel to the bronze detailing. For the tank, we want to complete the glowing effect by painting a thin line of Temple Guard Blue along the top edge of the blue window. The final couple of steps will see us highlight our metallic areas. Start out by picking out the bronze detailing of the armor and iconography using Hashut Copper. Then we can finish off with an edge highlight of Stormhost Silver to all the silver and gold areas of the miniature. And here we have the completed Rogue Trader Voidsman. I finished things off by varnishing the miniature before creating a simple basing scheme using some textured paints. You can find a full list of all the paints that I've used in this tutorial in the description below, along with any other equipment I've used to create this video, such as my Everlasting Wet Palette. If you enjoyed this video, please do let me know in the comments below, and if you haven't done so already, be sure to check out my Patreon page if you would like to support me in making these videos. If you have any questions or would just like to chat with others who enjoy my channel, I've set up a Discord server which you can find a link to in the description below. So the only thing left to say is, thanks for watching, and goodbye.